All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. I have been so sick for the past month straight. I had pneumonia, then I had a sinus infection, and it wasn't good. So, haven't been able to post a lot of riding content, but today we're gonna do a little bit of a fleet update. So, give you a sense for all the vehicles in the fleet. We're gonna go least expensive to most expensive, and. Um, yeah, you guys can judge me in the comments all you want, but this is the update of my little tiny garage. So, without further ado, let's get started, and I'll have a rolling total on the side of the screen for everybody. Alright, starting at number one, $400, and, you know, I'm going to put an asterisk here, because it's a sad state of affairs, but it's the RMK 800, 2003 RMK from Polaris. Unfortunately... We blew up the engine, and uh, because I only paid 400 bucks for this, decided to just part it out. And all the engine components have been sold. Um, I've already made my money back, so this will give me an opportunity to get something newer next season. I'm gonna still try and sell, you know, the track kit, and use this track on the trailer over here, which we'll get to in a second. But yeah, uh, sad but necessary. You know, out in Colorado, we ride some pretty awesome terrain, and uh, it was time to just bite the bullet and move on from this one. So, asterisk there, but 400 bucks, and it's still in my driveway. Next up is the trailer that I use for the snowmobiles. So, uh, this is a 1977 Bali trailer, and um, I bought it for $700 from the guy in town and it's very windy today but uh yeah it's a raft trailer it had uh some interesting box up here welded all together and i decided to turn it into a snowmobile trailer so um what that entailed was welding on each of these little tabs some of them are a little rusty i'm gonna have to spray some of that rust reformer on it i then added these track sliders so I got it set up for both one and two place. Right now, obviously, I have a snowmobile in the one place configuration. Um, and it touched up some of this stuff, replaced the bracket, um, and I also widened it by a foot. So uh, this is my custom expansion right here, and it holds snowmobiles quite well. Put some new wood underneath, and yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, painted it a little bit more, made sure that it wasn't going to rust too much, and uh, took care of it that way. So that's a 1977 Bali tilt trailer. The whole thing tilts. And I also put a little custom um, license plate bracket on it so that it could fold up and out of the way when I'm loading and unloading the snowmobile. Okay, we moved to the shed, which is going to get upgraded eventually, but next up is Ariel's dirt bike. So the RPS Viper, um, purchased from X-Pro on Amazon, but this is Ariel's 150cc dirt bike and the guest bike whenever she outgrows it. I picked this up for $999 on Amazon. Um, I'm not including shipping on any of these because that would change some of the numbers significantly, but yeah, this thing is fun. It's a good little bike to get the mail on in the neighborhood. And it's a great learning bike for Ariel because it's kickstart. It's a five speed. It's 150 cc, but it's not too big uh, for Ariel when she's learning how to ride. So yeah, fun little bike. And it's got the nicest, and by nicest, I mean cushiest seat of the fleet. Um, big fan of it. $999. Next up on the list, just $1 more expensive than the RPS Viper, the Honda XR500R. This is a 1982 Honda XR500R, most recently seen on the channel because I was doing some work on it. Um, refurbishing the plastics, changing some of the uh, weird things that were on the bike to begin with, putting a tubeless conversion on the back tire, just making it a nicer bike all around so 
everything's nicer in general and I'm happy with how this thing came out with the new handlebars, hand guards, levers, etc. So bought this off of Facebook Marketplace for a thousand bucks and then replaced the kickstand. Well, made a new kickstand, covered up some of the wonky stuff from uh, various previous owners and made it rideable for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, make sure you uh, check out the videos on this one so far. Haven't ridden it off-road yet, but it's going to be a beast when we get it out on the trail. And now the last bike in the shed is the X-Pro 250. I paid $1,200 on this before shipping um, on Amazon.com. So this showed up to my doorstep after about two weeks and had to assemble it. This thing is super fun. It's pretty much a modern suspension dirt bike, and I say modern, just inverted um, front forks, an adjustable rear shock. It's a little bit undersprung for my weight, but at my current riding ability, it's perfect for my needs. Carbureted, air-cooled, really simple, got a headlight. I can take this all over the place and really enjoy it, and people don't realize how cheap it actually was super easy to drive um and yeah this will become ariel's bike when she outgrows the rps viper and uh, i do plan on getting something even newer and modern so we'll have the honda the x pro the rps and a fourth bike with fuel injection but yeah anybody looking into the x pro 250 definitely check out the link below this thing's sweet and uh, it's definitely going to be in the fleet for quite some time Alrighty, back onto the snowmobile kick, but next up on the list is the 2006 Polaris Switchback, which I've been experiencing my first season of snowmobiling on. So, um, pick this up. Let's see if we can give you a little example of what's going on, because if you're new to the channel, you might not have seen this. But, yeah. This is the switchback. So, um, A-arms up front. It's got a 600cc two-stroke. It's getting the job done. Um, I'm going to make a video soon about my experience as a first-time snowmobiler, what I wish I'd known, and what I've learned, and what I plan to do in the future. But for $1,400, pick this up in Craig, Colorado. I call her Miss Piggy. She's noisy, smoky, loud, kind of falls over a lot, but um, always keeps on trucking. So definitely going to keep this in the fleet for a while. Uh, probably will end up upgrading this eventually. Definitely will end up upgrading this eventually. And then this might just become a early season trail sled for friends when they come to visit. Uh, front has been sticker bombed, you know had a lot of chicken poop all over it so i decided to clean it up and make it a little bit more custom and on the back i uh, built a custom rotopax mount with two gallons of gas it does have gas in it but that is just in case we run out on the trail this actually came with a 149 track and then a previous owner upgraded it to a 159 so longer track does help with getting unstuck but because of my current intake issues it does bog down as soon as you give it a hint of soft snow so we're still working on that made a bunch of upgrades to the intake um, to try and fix that haven't had a chance to test it because i've been so sick but hopefully next weekend slash in a couple videos for you guys we will see how those upgrades um, affected this came with scratchers super easy to just use your foot kick them out and then kick them back in when you don't need it um, and yeah super happy with this purchase although I can see why uh, first timers might not want to get an older sled on to the last of the mostly cheap projects uh, is the 1964 Land Cruiser which slowly working on this one my shoulder surgery in the spring really delayed this project, but 
we were able to convert the brakes to disc brakes and i apologize for the literal mess all over it it just came it became a, a storage spot for a bunch of stuff but we put the disc brakes on all four corners we installed a power steering bracket underneath a bunch of stuff which i'll clean up we got new wheels and tires which you can see right here um We've got the front panels off, and then we did some rust removal, which that hole right there, which has a cardboard box sticking through it, it's pretty much rusted away. A couple more things to take care of, like repainting it, um, redoing some of the brackets on the gates. We might just ditch the hard top altogether and go soft top only. And then I have a Hoonigan steering wheel that People are saying, don't do it, make it a classic wheel. But at the end of the day, it's my truck and I like the Hoonigan steering wheel, so I'm gonna put it on there. All right, now on to the more expensive toys and I'm not including the John Deere tractor that you just saw because that's, you know, that's a tool that we use around the house. And I forgot to mention on the Land Cruiser, I paid a whopping $2,000 for this truck with Colorado title, so. Um, pretty good steal on my part. Very happy with the purchase, although I wish it was going a little bit faster. My goal is to get this thing running by the springtime, and then I'll make it look nicer uh, throughout the next year. All right, on to the expensive stuff now. So, my 2021 Honda Africa Twin, which I picked up in Denver. It is a six-speed manual transmission so not a dct it's got a clutch lever right here which is you know really fun uh cruise control apple carplay super fun bike this thing is really capable um but also heavy so you know you're definitely in positions where you can feel like you want to take this on single track and then you have to take a step back and say nope shouldn't do it um uh, yeah no real modifications to this one yet. There will be in the near future. Biggest things are extended windscreen right here. I've got the heed crash bars, or the heed barricade crash bars. So this is a single piece of metal mounting at the frame at the back to the frame down here to the frame up at the front and then right at the front here to a bracket underneath. Um, each side is one piece and they get sandwiched together around it. Uh, I got the front crash bars and I also have the rear bars, which also serve as a great grab point for when you're working on the bike, trying to move it. These things are solid. Um, you'll notice that there is a scratch right here. That is from my friend James crashing into me when I had probably 400 miles on the bike and bike tipped over to the right because um, it glanced off of that. And that is the only damage. Um, highly recommend these heat crash bars, super durable and they protect the bike. Finally, the last upgrade is the Hepco and Becker crash bar guards. Um, these were super cool because they mount so discreetly and they don't change any of the stock equipment on the handlebar. So um, durable, right? They go around everything. They're not some sort of shiny looking thing that goes around and then bolts right here. It is end of the handlebar using your existing equipment to a new and improved triple clamp or handlebar clamp spot right here. Um, Biggest complaint with this is that these bolts are made out of spaghetti. So uh, just trying to get them to the torque specifications really buggered them up. At some point, I'll replace them, but today is not that day. So stuff planned for the future on this, more aggressive tires, new exhaust, um, and potentially a high fender kit for the front. But this is a cruiser slash light adventure bike for me. I have taken it on some fun stuff, but honestly, the small dirt bikes are more fun for that sort of thing. Um, oh, right. The price. This, I paid $15,200 all in. 
Um, it was the only manual Africa twin in Colorado at the time when I purchased it. There were about 20 DCTs, and this one came up uh, in the morning, and I bought it in the afternoon. So I was calling around for a while, picked it up, and got it. Finally, the big one, my daily driver, the 2022 F-150 Tremor. Uh, this is my daily driver. Obviously, it's a fun truck. It's fast. It replaced my Audi S7, which was also a super fun car and even faster. Uh, but having moved to the mountains, it really was time to change it up and get a truck. So um, this color is antimatter blue, and this is a great example of it in the sun. Yes, the truck is extremely dirty. I just went skiing. But uh, yeah, it comes with... 33 inch general tire, all terrains. Uh, I put a lot Rhino liner in the back, DIY'd it, it looks fine. I highly recommend doing this yourself. Came with the windows tinted, it's got heated and cooled seats, and all the fun stuff you could ever need. So. Super happy with this truck. It still smells new. I've only got 19,043.7 miles on it. I've only put 5,000 miles on it. I bought it used. And the price I paid was a whopping $65,000. So uh, new, the sticker on that truck had a price tag of around 82.83. Um, picked up this truck with, what, 14,000 miles on it for 65,000, um, one year out of its model year. So it's got the 360 camera, the heated and cooled seats, like I mentioned before, um, the skid plates, the off-road stuff. Uh, I got a deal. Um, previous owner had a, was, uh, expanding their family and needed to upgrade to something different. So I swooped in, picked this up from the dealership and, uh, haven't looked back. Very happy with having a truck. Can't quite do the math in my head right now, but uh, here is a breakout of all the toys and the total value of the fleet, which is kind of absurd when you think about it, right? You just buy things and then end up having a whole bunch of stuff that's worth a bunch of money. Um, so yeah, let's keep the train going on this one. Let's uh, let's keep buying toys, fixing them up, riding them, and maybe trading them in for other stuff. Hope uh, this was a fun video for you. You learned something. I want to make sure that, you know, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on toys um, to have fun. But you do have to spend a little bit. So you either have to have skills to fix it up, money to buy them, or a little bit of in-between on both. So... This was fun to make and a good reflection on my end of what's going on uh, in my garage. Let's get back out on the trail. I'm starting to feel better, so hopefully I can get back to making snowmobiling content, dirt biking content, other automotive projects. I hope you like and subscribe. Get out on the trail, and we'll see you next time. Peace.